Goblin band when last you came, soon put an end to Megan's game. So now we're in with Izzy's crew, already they're in level two. An elfish spell they had to choose, then cured a headache caused by booze. They brought down Sidrus, who was high, then magic drained the quagmire dry. Now Izzy's leapt and bypassed doom, and landed in a wizard room. One truth so far, she's given Merlin. Two more remain, so let's disturb them. These little men are full of guile. You'll find them on the Emerald Isle. If you should catch one, so I'm told, he'll have to give you all his gold. What is it? <laughs> oh, that must be a leprechaun. Yes, definitely. Leprechaun. Truth accepted. Here, then, is the third. They ruled the Scots for centuries. They ruled the English after Liz. One lost his head when doing so. Now name these royals from long ago. Um, any ideas, Izzy? I have literally no clue. Hmm. Well, it must be the name of a royal house, obviously. Liz must mean Elizabeth I. I mean, we don't know who's going to rule after Elizabeth II, do we? Charles III. Unless he decides to call himself George VII, I heard he might do that. Well, yeah, but anyway, it must be Elizabeth I, and she was a Tudor. That's right. Her parents were Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. What was the topic we did at primary school? Tudors and... Stuarts, that's it! Here, I've just clicked. The king who lost his head was Charles I. He was a Stuart? Yes, so go for Stuarts, Izzy. Stuarts? Truth accepted. Three is the score. Congratulations. Already you had defeated Fear. Now you have defeated Folly. Actually, it was Hordris who defeated Fear, Master, wasn't it? Quiet, Pickle. Your reward is called Little. It may only be a little spell, but it could help you far more than a little, believe me. Particularly if you should happen to come across someone you'd rather wasn't quite so big. <laughs> Farewell then, Izzy, and good luck. Right, Merlin's gone now, so sidestep to your right, Izzy. Again. Again. Walk forwards. Just keep going like that, Izzy, and you'll get to the door. Where am I? You're standing at the top of some stairs in a big grey room. There's a table in the middle of the room with some things on it. So, come down the stairs. <laughs> okay. Walk forwards, Izzy. Can you tell us what's on the table? Um, there's a key, a stick, a bottle, a scroll, and a spyglass. Ah, a spyglass, Master. We haven't seen what Maldemay's been up to for a while, have we? Maybe this is a chance to find out. Perhaps so, Pickle. Shall we have a go on the spyglass, then? Yes, lift it up, Izzy. Okay. Intruders have been in the realm of Queen Maldemay! Accursed interlopers! Brazen encroachers! How could they possibly have entered our royal domain, Nemanor, if you did not bring them? Good lady, I assure you that no one has made use of the portal between my sheep and the mile world, except for your own servants, of course. No one boards the Cloud Walker without my knowledge and my permission. There is no chance that anyone has crept through to your realm. Please, do not let these unfounded suspicions jeopardize our trade arrangement. I have already taken delivery of the next consignment of... merchandise. You do still want it, don't you? Hmm, well... To be blunt with you, Captain, we are far from certain that we can afford to take the risk! It's entirely up to you, of course, Your Majesty. I dare say I could find another buyer for this particular produce. No! Do not do that. 
We shall send our servants through to your ship as before, and our trade arrangement will continue. For now. As you wish, my queen. I take it that the same payment as last time will be acceptable? Yes, but I would gladly halve that amount if you could also provide me with a sextant. A what? A sextant, my lady. A navigational instrument. I recently took possession of a new compass, but I still find that accurate navigation is something of a problem for me. But if I had a sextant, alongside my shiny new compass and my trusty old astrolab, I know I should fare better. Navigational problems? You dare to waste my time with talk of such trifles! It wouldn't have to be a brand new sextant, just one that's in good working order, that's all I want. There will be no sextant for you, Nemanor. The payment will be the same as before, and if I discover any more intruders in my domain, then I shall be left in no doubt as to their sort of origin. Do I make myself clear? Most clear, madam. Good! The screen's gone black. Put down the spy glasses, eh? Well, master, do you really think there's any chance that Captain Nemanor will agree to take Izzy to the Maya world? He won't be persuaded to risk his arrangement with Maldame, if you ask me. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Pickle. It seems to me that there's something Nemanor prizes even more than Maldame's favour, and if Izzy could be the one to give it to him... Yes, we know what he wants, don't we? <laughs> What's so funny, Izzy? <laughs> you said he wanted a sex tent! <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like a fun thing to have. So we'll need to buy one of those sextant things, presumably. What have we got to choose from? A stick, a bottle, and a key. Some gold or silver would be more useful. Yeah. Is there anything written on the bottle, Izzy? Um, Speedwell? Speedwell? So it could be like a herb or a magical potion, maybe? Read the scroll, Izzy. Maybe that'll give us a clue. Okay, then. Divine the way ahead with speed to unlock the path of truth? That means we should take the potion and the key. No, I don't think so. Divine probably means we should take the stick. It must be a divining rod. Oh well, that's helpful. It's got a clue for all three. Consider the words of the scroll very carefully, team. It says we need all of them. The rod, the potion and the key. I think it's saying we need to take the stick and the potion to unlock the path of truth, so maybe we don't need the key to unlock it? Ah, good thinking, Izzy. Okay then, take the divining rod and the speed well, Izzy. Right. Onwards now, team. Turn 90 degrees to your right, Izzy. Walk forwards. Stop. Sidestep right. Stop. Walk forwards. You're in a blue room with four doors on the wall in front of you. Is something going to happen? It seems not, Daniel. Come on, guys, tell me what to do. I'm literally standing here like a lemon. Um, we need to choose a door, I guess, but we can't. Hmm, I see what you mean, Sam. No clues at all, but perhaps there's some way of divining them. I suppose we could just go right, but... Oh, do you know how to hold the rod, Izzy? <laughs> you know I do, Keir. Ah, something did happen. Yes, that's a dangerous haunting, boys. Make sure it doesn't get too close to Izzy, or she'll certainly feel the consequences. Hold the stick by its two prongs, Izzy, and wave it around in front of you. What? I can't hear you over the ghost! Stupid thing! Wave the stick around, Izzy. That's right. A shield has appeared over the door on the far left. Sidestep left, Izzy. Again. Again. A couple more. Good. Walk forwards. Where am I? You're in a beige room. Well, it's more of a hall, I guess. With a big mural on the wall in front of you. I think it's some kind of religious scene. 
there's a door to the far right and a man has just walked onto the screen he's wearing white robes and a black hat and he's pushing a kind of cart well 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 here's someone i hadn't particularly expected to see again in the dungeon unless i'm much mistaken team this is rothbury the apothecary purveyor of homemade remedies and perpetual pursuer of the secrets of alchemy. No, no, I, uh, I'm not an alchemist anymore, no. Too many explosions, too many angry town fathers, too many homeless villagers running after me with pitchforks. No, I don't do that anymore. Yes, uh, hello there, young traveller. I am Rothbury the Apothecary, purveyor of fine healing potions and salves, as well as sundry goods and knickknacks. Who are you? Should I tell him? Yes. Um, is he a dungeoneer on the quest for the shield? Oh, right. Is there anything I might be able to give you to help with your quest, Izzy? Any medicaments, perhaps? Hmm? I have a fine concoction here that's guaranteed to cure any cough, cold, or sniffle. Just rub it all over your chest before you go to bed each night. And... <laughs> um, we don't really need any medicine, do we? No, but didn't he say he had other stuff as well? He said you had sundry goods and knickknacks? Yes, yes, I do. It's hard to make a decent living as a traveling apothecary these days, so I've had to... What's the word? Diversify. That's it. Hmm? I've had to diversify. One just can't afford not to in these difficult financial times. That is so true. My dad used to sell home insurance, but he started falling behind with the mortgage payment, so now he sells car insurance as well. Yes. So you know what I'm talking about. Well then, what kind of sundries are you interested in? Do you think he's got a sextant? Maybe. Ask him, Izzy. <laughs> have, 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 you, have you got? Have you got a sex? <laughs> sex what, love? <laughs> Tell him it's for navigating, is he? <laughs> is it a sex? <laughs> you use it for navigating at sea. It's got like a little telescope on the top, I think. Ah, yes. I think perhaps I do have one of those. Let's see what you've got here. Saucepans, potato peelers, razor blades. Aha! Here you are then. One sextant. Is it one, Keir? Yes, I think so. Ask him if it's in good working order, is he? Does it work? Oh, yes, it does. I'm not going to lie to you, is he? It's not brand new. And it's not in absolutely tip top condition. But it could certainly be used in an emergency. We'd better buy it then, hadn't we? Yeah, tell him we'll take it, Izzy. I'll take it. Oh, good. Listen, uh, Izzy, I'm not an avaricious man by nature, but um, I do need to make a living. So, do you have anything you might be able to give me for this? We've only got the potion, so offer it to him, Izzy. I've got this potion. It's called Speedwell. Ah, a Speedwell potion. Yes, I've been waiting to get my hands on one of those for years. It's a deal. Give it to him, Izzy. Here you go. Thank you. Hmm? And here's your sextant, look. Cheers. <laughs> well then, I'd better be on my way, I suppose. Good luck with your quest, Izzy. Cheerio. Right, he's leaving now, so... Yes, I think it's time to press on, team. Sidestep right, Izzy. Again. Keep going. Stop. Walk forwards. Yes, that's it. You're in a purple room with one door. There's a massive spider web stretching across the screen above you. Oh no, Master. There's only one creature in the dungeon who could have made a web like that. Yes, indeed, Pickle. There's a giant tarantula above you now, is he? Extreme danger, team. This is Ariadne, the queen of all arachnids. Take action now, or Izzy will be feeding her. Someone you'd rather wasn't quite so big. We need to use the spell. Yes, cast it, Dan. Okay, spell casting. L I T T L E. Yes, the spider's shrinking, is he? And now we can't see her anymore. Yes, well done, team. Spiders always give me the shivers, especially when they're that big. I hope Ariadne's going to remain pocket sized from now on, Master. Hmm, a nice thought, Pickle, but I doubt that Ariadne will stay on the Atkins for long. 
She may pose more of a danger to flies than to dungeoneers now, boys, but goodness knows when that state of affairs might change. You'd best get Izzy moving, I think. Walk forwards, Izzy. Sidestep right slightly, and keep walking forwards. Where am I? You're in a rocky cave with two stalactites hanging from the ceiling. On your right, there's a kind of, kind of tunnel, I guess, in a, in the wall of the cave, and we can see like the deck of a ship. Look, master, the portal to the Cloud Walker that Hordris created is still there. So it is, Pickle. Boys, this cursed vessel is now the only way to reach the Mire World from the upper levels of my dungeon. So I suggest you get Izzy on board with all speed. First, though, the matter of food has become urgent. Sidestep left, Izzy. Once more. Can you see something by your foot? Yes, it's a small joint of me, ham, I think. Put it in your knapsack. Yeah, I'm doing that. Okay. Now sidestep to your right. Keep going. Stop. And walk forwards onto the ship. Okay, you're on the deck now, Izzy. There's a ladder leading up to the bridge, and there's a man on top of the ladder. It's the one from the spyglass, Captain Nemenor. Yeah, and he's pointing a scimitar at you. Scimitar? A Saracen-style sword, Izzy. And I get to use the same Chelsea fun! That's literally not fair, Keir! <laughs> Sorry, Izzy. Hold your place, goblin spawn. I won't abide stowaways on my ship. Who are you and what do you want here? Well, I'm Izzy, a dungeoneer on the quest of the shield, and, um, what do I want, guys? to get to the Maya world. Do we really want to tell him that, though? I mean, he's not supposed to take people there, is he? Well, we have to tell him something, don't we? We're not going to get to the Maya world any other way. You better just tell him the truth, Izzy. I want to go to the Maya world. Oh, do you now? Well, you won't be getting there on my ship. Maldeby has made her position on the matter more than clear, and I have no wish to arouse her suspicion any further. Whether she actually suspects that I let her dungeoneer through to Linghorn, I cannot tell, but I will not take the chance. And you always blindly follow Malgamay's orders, do you? Oh, be careful, Izzy. I follow no one's orders but my own. However, I have every reason to want to stay on good terms with Malgamay, and I can see no reason to stand here and explain myself to you. Just because you know I'm right. Yeah, go, Izzy. No, no, don't make him angry. Offer him the sextant. Oh yeah, right. If you let me through to the Mar world, I'll give you this sextant. Hmm, a sextant, you say? Hold it up so I can see it properly. Yes, that looks like a fine instrument. Are you sure it's in good working order? Well, it's second hand, but it literally works perfectly. I see. He's coming down the ladder now, is he? And he's putting his sword away. If you were to give me that sextant, I'm sure that my attention would be entirely diverted for several minutes. During that time, if you were to sneak through the doors and find the portal to the mile world beneath the hatch that lies beyond, I dare say I wouldn't even notice that you'd gone. So, will you give me the sextant? Say yes, Izzy. Okay, he go. All right, he's turned away from you and he's examining the sextant now, so... Sidestep right, Izzy. Again. Walk forwards. It looks like you're in some kind of cabin now, walking past a load of ropes and chests and stuff, and we can see the hatch just in front of you. Can you lower yourself through it, Izzy? Yeah. Where am I? You're in a grey room with two shield-shaped holes in the wall, and a wooden table on your right. Here we are again, Master. Lingholm in all its glory. Yes. Welcome to Level 3, team. Objects are here, it seems. You'd better begin your investigation before something starts investigating you. Sidestep right, Izzy. Again? Can you see the table? Yeah. There's a silver bottle with flight written on it. 
a ruby, a spyglass, a scroll, and some sort of plant with a label tied to it. Grave work, it says. Shall we use the spyglass? Yeah. We might as well do that first. Hold it up, Izzy. I must reiterate that you will only be allowed to remain here in the Maya world for as long as you are useful to me. You are useful, aren't you? Yes, my queen. Jacques is your devoted servant. I'll sniff out those fools and remove them from your halls. See that you do. Nemanor assures me that no one has snuck through the portal I placed on his ship, but I know there have been interlopers in my realm. I have sensed the presence of a very powerful sorcerer intruding in my chambers on more than one occasion, and one of my patrols recently came across a group of Maya men feeding on the remains of a small human. A small human, my lady? Can you tell me which is smaller then? An eighth of a foot? Or a sixteenth of two foot? It was a dungeoneer, I know it was! Traegard's troublesome tots are trying to steal our royal treasures, but we shall not let them succeed! Bring me a dungeoneer in that ridiculous net of yours, and you will be very well rewarded. A dungeoneer, you say? Yes, just as you please. Which metal is liquid at twenty degrees? I suggest you give that one a little more thought. Your intended victim could claim unfair play unless you specify Fahrenheit or Celsius. It's meant to be Celsius, isn't everything these days? No metal could be liquid at 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Besides, nothing rhymes with Fahrenheit or Celsius. Well, not all your riddles have to rhyme, do they? Not all of them, no. Can you think and then say? Which planet has years that last less than a day? Just get moving, you wretched little man, and do as you have been commanded! Our royal ears have been forced to endure your pointless prattle for long enough! Okay, Izzy, put down the spyglass. Well, it seems that Maldame has become sufficiently paranoid about intruders to recruit Snapperjack to her cause. I didn't see that one coming. Can we really call Maldame paranoid, Master? Her suspicions are entirely correct, after all. Well, just because you know they're out to get you, Pickle, doesn't mean you're not paranoid. Okay, Izzy. Take a look at the scroll now. Danger, do not take it. Is that all it says? Yeah. But it doesn't say what it's dangerous to take. These scrolls just make things more confusing, if you ask me. Again, team, you'll have to dig a little deeper, I think. Well, I guess you can take a potion more than you can take a gem or a plant, so maybe we should leave the potion. You might be able to take the plant, though, if it's, like, a herb or whatever. Grave work sounds like it should be a herb. What if danger means the red gem, because danger signs are red, aren't they? So you think I literally shouldn't take danger cure and leave the ruby? Yeah, I think so. That leaves us with the Grave Wort and the Flight Potion, doesn't it? They both sound pretty useful and unusual. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, I'm sure Kieran's right. Okay, I've left the Ruby behind. Get Izzy on her way now, team. Or something may well be collecting her. Sidestep left, Izzy. Keep going. Okay, stop there and walk forwards. Yes, keep going like that. You're in a green corridor with burning torches on the walls. You can see like a T junction in front of you, but there's a skeleton with a sword walking back and forth across it. Is there a pie by your right foot, Izzy? Um, it's a baked tart actually. Well, you know what to do with it. I literally hate baked tart. There's never enough jam and almonds literally make me throw up. <laughs> Pick them off before you put it in your knapsack, then. <laughs> I can't be bothered, Sammy. There it's in. Careful now, boys. As Sam has already told us, a Skeletron is here. It may not have much in the way of brains, and it certainly can't see Izzy while she's standing so far away, but it will see her if she crosses its path. And it will attack. 
So, time her escape with care, team. Okay, so I guess we want to go right, as we don't have anything to go on. Yeah. Shuffle forwards, Izzy. Stop there. Sidestep to your right. Again. Okay. When he goes across again. Yes. Run forwards, Izzy, now! Quickly! Hurry, team, he's coming back. Turn 90 degrees right, then keep running. Quick as you can! Run, Izzy, run! Where am I? You're standing underneath, like, a purple archway with a balcony at the top. There's a big door on your right, and then in front of you, there's a man with a white beard. Hordris. Yes, indeed, Kieran. This is Hordris the Confuser. Based on all the available evidence, it's clear that he has some kind of mission on the go in the Maya world, although I have no idea what it might involve. His long-standing friendship with Captain Nemanor seems to have eliminated any access problems he may have had, but as to his potential reaction to meeting Izzy here, well, I really wouldn't like to guess. What's he doing? Is he in some kind of trance? I think he's meditating, Daniel. He does that quite a lot. So we could just try and sneak past without attracting his attention. But maybe we're supposed to get some help from him. We'll have to risk disturbing him, I think. Say you're there, Izzy. What? Say, hello, Hordris. Hello, Hordris. Say you're sorry for disturbing him. And call him a flattering name. I'm sorry for disturbing you, your... Eminence. Grace. Grace. Hmm. A dungeoneer is trying to butter me up, it seems. Have no fear, young lady. I will not harm you. What is your name? Shall I tell him? Yeah. My name's Izzy, and I'm looking for the shield. Ah, uh, yes, of course you are. Well, that's in Marblehead, but I'm afraid I have no idea how you might be able to get there. Crossing the Great Mire would have been the thing to do until quite recently, but Maldame has taken the Golden Galleon out of commission. However, I'm sure she has her own ways to travel between her two precious towers. Perhaps you will be able to discover one of these ways, Izzy. And perhaps I might be able to give you something to help. First, though, we must indulge in a little fair trade. And fair, as I'm sure you'll agree, is always preferable to foul. At least when it comes to trading. Tell me, is that a sprig of brave words you are carrying? What should we tell her to say? The truth. Say yes, Izzy. Yes. It just so happens that I have been looking for a sample of that particular ingredient. I need it for, well, something. Give me the grave word, Izzy and I will provide you with a couple of rather useful spells. Can we trust him? Yes. Give it to him, Izzy. Here you go. Thank you. Now, go quickly from this place, and I gift you two spells. Oh no, Master. Time turns, but we can't stop now. We can and must, Pickle, for now we must all wait and see.